Amma's most beloved sweet children. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Um, so Tetson is asking a question uh, today. Lot of misery, pain, sorrow in the world, and in the 21st century, commotions and unrest and uh, so many nature calamities and lot of problems are unbelievable sorrows in the world. Yekadasa Rudras, there are 11 Rudras are there. These 11 Rudras are angry right now. Uh, that is only the reason we are going to do a special universal peace special program in Atlanta from May 1st to 11th. This is called Atirudram. Atirudram means, uh, Rudram means he who is the eradicator of the sorrow. And he who is the eradicator of the root of sorrow is called Rudra. So that is why this Atirudram is approximately some thousands of times the recitation of the special Vedic hymns chanted by all the Vedic people, chanting by the people. And um, so this is going to give a lot of peace, rest to the entire world. You also are aware of the people who are in this world today who are seemingly no longer bothered with pain or misery or suffering. They are on a profound spiritual path. They are getting closer and closer to self-realization. And they're good role models for the rest of us who want to be where they are. In other words, you see with your presence here people climbing the ladder of spiritual awareness. Do you see that? Yes. Lot of people are really sages in our 21st century. I saw so many people are climbing the spiritual ladder like anything. Uh, they are very selfless and no ego problem, no pride and they are so pure, blemishless inside. I really proud of them. But they need not, um, no need of Amma for them. But who really need Amma? who are really in crisis, in pain, in sorrow, in health problems, in depressions, they need me. So that's why I have to come to all my children to eradicate their pain and sorrow uh, to, towards their hearts. Your love is so abundant, it's so apparent. Um, we saw that in action today with a woman who is profoundly sorrowful. She was in very deep pain. She was considering the ultimate action of life and your words to her just communicated your energy, your light and your love. And all of us in the room felt it, not just that one woman. She clearly felt it. She walked away wiping her eyes and I could see that she was better. So it leads me to a very important question. We see your photographs. Some of us see you on videotape when we look at the uh, soldiers and on the internet. Some of us see films of Amma Sri Karunamai. How much better is it if we are given the chance to be in your physical presence than to just see your image on a photograph? How much better? <laughs> That's an I'm all pervading. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just a physical existence. If you call A, uh, I already told you, no, before say Ma, I will be with them. <laughs> I will take care of my babies like anything. Yeah. So it's good to be able to see you, but it's also better to be aware that you're always available, 24-7. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Doctors have calls uh, sometimes, uh, midnight calls, but Amma is always on call. <laughs> uh, Young people today are growing up way too fast, all over the world, especially here in America, often without ever giving a single thought to spirituality. How can we change this? How can this be changed for the better, to make children wake up to the realization of who they really are? Uh, actually, this is not correct. Um, some children are very spiritual also. Uh, some children have spiritual background. And some children have by birth spiritual background. Sometimes parents are also not uh, spiritual, but children are very spiritual. I saw so many places all over the world, uh, children born with spiritual background uh, in their previous lifetimes background. 
so they need a good leadership uh, they need a definite aim in front of them how to lead the life how to lead uh, good values values are important in the life so they need to have this uh, divine values speaking truth working hard nature and also noble behaviors and all the things they have to focus on more education and service and love also so they need to guide all these things some um, it have to become in the schools also the schools also go do the orientation for the students and also some spiritual people have to guide all these uh, students mm -hmm. i already doing that wherever we are going in the colleges and the universities everywhere we are doing to the students and saraswati diksha millions of people are oriented by myself and but i love students very much definitely they are going to be do good things in future well they always say that the young people today are the future for this world and it's encouraging to hear you say that there are many young people who are on a spiritual path who have spiritual curiosity yes uh and one quick question about karma uh when it comes to young people and old people we carry it from lifetime to lifetime but do as we burn off karma in this lifetime some of it has to do with the previous lifetimes does that mean destiny means that we're going to be brought back to a better lifetime the next time when when people or can they make it worse for themselves depending on their behavior this lifetime this lifetime if they born lot of karma with their good activities they will get more better life than what they got right now good so they can look forward to each progressive lifetime yes being a better life more more progress comes in life more spiritual progress better life externally also external circumstances like father mother friends everybody also going to be more spiritual oriented people soft nature people around them and you give us so many examples of how people can speed up their spiritual progress in this lifetime with seva with with uh puja with prayer with meditation with all sorts of approaches repeating the name of god is there any one path that people should focus on more than the others as they try to awaken spiritually almost all these paths are easy for people in their phase they have to focus on prayers anybody in any phase in the world in any phase they have all the pujas some prayer system there some uh, service system there anything they can do definitely it eradicated the ego from the heart so the eradication of egoism is the main thing in the spirituality the ins is a small circle but the supreme uh, the truth is a big circle to merge in that supreme circle you have to eradicate that small circle of the ins so service is a greatest golden link and love is also a golden link to connected with the absolute some people say ama that it's impossible to get rid of your ego that it's always with us so is our job to make it smaller or is our job to eradicate our ego altogether gradually first we have to make it small and gradually it will be eradicated in this lifetime it can be definitely, eradicated definitely definitely and um you mentioned prayer as one of the approaches amas and avatar avatars don't pray do they it is for the, like a model to the world ah so whatever we are doing like a model yes mother is doing children also following that even though the mother doesn't need it but the children will follow for children's sake is the same true with meditation because i would think avatars don't need to meditate no necessary we are always in the self absolute self mm -hmm. and and your meditation continues to be a model to us on that level as well yes yeah do you ever get angry ama <laughs> <laughs> did you see my angry son any time no <laughs> never not for a minute anybody <laughs> <laughs> and i also see something else i see your your unbridled love all day every day you're on tour every day i've seen you at your ashram 
in, in Andhra Pradesh, I see nothing but high energy and high levels of love. No matter how many people bring all their many, many problems to you, from where does the energy come to supply you that much love and, and <laughs> lightheartedness? <laughs> this is a <laughs> peculiar question, Tetson. <laughs> uh, Supreme Self is absolute energy, no? Where it comes, no? It is there, already there. <laughs> People often ask me, does Sai Baba need food? Does Sai Baba need to sleep? And I, I ask you, do you need, the, what we who are not avatars, we need rest, we need reflection, we need meditation. We need exercise, we need sleep and food. Does an avatar need all that? Not necessary. Not necessary? Not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> and how many years are you going to be with us on this earth? <laughs> you could be here as long as you wish, I know. 500 years? 200 Daddy, years? 200 years. <laughs> <laughs> How many years I have to be here? Forever. Forever? Forever. <laughs> Where can I go? I am all pervading. <laughs> <laughs> Jody, I know you have a question. And I'm going to give you the microphone. Just read into it. Just a couple. Um, uh, it's obvious to us that we have vast amounts of learning ahead of us. Uh, how can we get encouragement and maintain um, consistent enthusiasm without being discouraged? How do we know we're on the right track? Devotion. Devotion melts all these things like anything. Have devotion, and pure devotion, 100% devotion. All of these hindrances, challenges, any kind of this, any problems will be dissolve in devotion. You just uh, attain unbelievable peace and unbelievable happiness and boundless bliss always. The nature of the Self is Ananda. Ananda. Your nature of Self is Ananda. You have to be experience Ananda. I want to see the total world, all of our people, always with Ananda, not with sorrow, not with sadness, not with the depression. I don't like to see any of my children in this world with this kind of pains. I want to see always all of you with Ananda only. And Amma, when you say devotion, I interpret that to mean the more I focus on my love for you and Baba, the more I try to be like you and Baba, think like you and Baba, the more I try to let you in and through me. Is that devotion? Yes. Thank you. You have the devotion of many people, uh, a tiny handful of workers who work endlessly for you, Amma. They're always present with you when you come on tour to the United States. There's one beautiful person who's with us right now, who's on tour with you. She works very hard and she has a question. Shalini okay. wants to know, and she's been wanting to know the answer to this question okay. for several years. She wants to know, what do you see when you look at us? Do you see our past and future as well as our Maya bodies, or do you see more than that? Shalini. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get that question yeah. right, Shalini? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what I would like to know, Ama, is because you see all of us and you see also our oneness, which we are not aware of, when you look at us, do you see like a sea of, of gold and colors and like a oneness that also appears to your eyes? Yes, I see all of you are like um, only the light. Like lantern, inside what is there in the lantern, light is there. I'm not saying the seeing the external bodies of you. So not seeing Ted, not seeing Jodi, not seeing Shalini, but the light, the Atman, Brahman. And what about the negativity we bring to that light sometimes? Okay, negativity is there. That is the play of God. So that's why 
a negativity, positivity. Without negativity, there is no value for positivity. So of it's course, required. Yeah, <laughs> both are there in this, that is world. That's the Maya of this world. And why do you call the negativity the play of God? It doesn't seem to work that way. But you say it's the play of God when we have negativity in ourselves. This will be grad. God gave you greatest boon of the intellect. The intellect is the greatest wealth than any wealth of the world. So with that intellect, we have to conquer. In the one year, entire year, we have to study 10th grade, 11th grade, like that. So they have to study the examination. You have to get the first grade in examinations. So how he is working, he have to work with his intellect. He have to use his mind and uh, make it sharp and focus on education. He have to finish his education, get good rank in the education. Similarly, in this world there is good and bad things are there in front of you. You must not focus on the good activities, doing harm to people, speaking bad words, giving hard time to people, burning the houses, doing black magic, not kind of these things, no? This is not noble. People have to do good things only. So that's, this is the Maya people sometimes, because of their, the attitudes of the previous lifetimes, they enter into these, these levels and finally they will gradually growing and growing and growing in spiritual levels mm -hmm. and finally come to the sattvic nature. Through the sattvic nature, they have to climb more steps and finally attain the supreme goal of realization. So it is a large journey. It's a long journey. Long, billions lifetimes journey. And long in long that journey often comes periods of darkness and lightness, joy and pain. And Amma, you say you will take care of everything. I've heard you tell people that over and over again. You've told me and you've told Jody that. I'm sure you've told Shalini that. But then people sometimes become hurt or sick or they lose their job and they lose their faith or their faith weakens a little bit. How can they understand that you are still there taking care of them even when their faith falls from the seventh floor to the first floor? It never happened like that. If you miss the job, next immediately you will get another job. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get sick because of the previous lifetimes of some karma, then you will come out from the sickness and you will get abundance of happiness and you will get healing. Everything, uh, son, uh, it is, uh, you never, uh, the true devotee never miss the faith in God. So life is like a puzzle, like a game. And yes. We have to figure it out, don't yes. we? Uh, and so many people are so distracted because of their busy lives. They don't have time, they think, to figure it out. They don't have time for Seba because they're working two jobs, sometimes three jobs, providing for their families. And they're always worried that they're going to be evicted from their homes or won't have enough money for food. How can these people help themselves more spiritually who, who in a very real sense, don't have extra time between sleeping and working to provide for their families? Some people, if physically they are not doing spiritual activities, but their hearts are so good, they are very pious and so sweet and gentle, that uh, they are doing selfless service to the world. Service is also a yoga to attain salvation. So jobs can be service. Job is, uh, it's not like a job, no? Job is like a duty, is like a puja. Duty is like a tapas. Lot of people, I saw people in our world doing any of their duties. Their duties they are doing like a tapas, like a puja, like a yajnam. It's so great. And there are so many people who have a good attitude and work hard and they may see their jobs as, as service. But I just got an email yesterday uh, from somebody who's very, very devote to you and Baba. She's very spiritual. And she was talking about a very, very difficult boss, superior person who makes life difficult for her and for others, who takes advantage of them, who ridicules them. When you have that on a daily basis and you're doing all you can to grow your spiritual self, what more can you do? What? How can you advise a person who suffers like that? I will help her. 
<laughs> Jody's going to read another question or two that she gave me. Uh, and if she needs a minute, I'll ask her another question first. But uh, she's got some good ones here. Amma, um, uh, if, if someone asked you for the gift of letting go, would that be the same as asking for salvation? Or is there more to salvation than letting go, complete surrender? Yeah. Salvation is um, totally the eradication of the I-ness, is salvation. It will take time. It will take time. How much time? Long time. But when they totally surrender, it will take one minute only. Totally surrender then there is no identification of highness there. It's justly the individual personality merge in that universal personality. It is so beautiful. I'm going to give Shalini a moment to think of a question she'd like to ask too, and in the meantime I'm going to ask you in some cases, Amma, illness can seem unsolvable. Are we to assume that all of this is karma? And if it's karma, how can we best handle spiritually our karmic illness? or karmic disease. Yeah, by prayer and meditation, by service, we can eradicate this karma very easily. For example, there is a big poisonous tree. The poisonous tree, it will take time, uh, it took time to grow so many years. So, with the today effort, we can cut the tree in some couple of hours. Hmm. So how much time it took to grow that poisonous tree with all the thorns and there is a lot of poisonous gas from the tree. But to cut that a tree with the thorns and all the uh, very bad poisonous fruits, we took an axe and cut the tree. It took one hour, 15 minutes, like that only. So today effort is sincere from the heart. If you pray, you will get the grace like anything. So it could happen, as you mentioned in your last answer to Jody's question, it could happen at any moment. Any moment. And you said, if you pray from the heart, I want to ask you about that. I hear many people saying their mantras 15, 200, 300 times. Uh, they sing beautiful bhajans, but I, I don't know that their heart's in it. Is How important is it to come from your heart? When it you're have to come from the heart, not just from the tip of the tongue. Mm -hmm. Question. Shalini has another question. Um, uh, this is a question that has been with me f since last year, and uh, um, and is I lost a really dear sister. I lost her physical presence because she's still in my heart and she's still with me, and she left her body. And uh, what I've been thinking is. Do we have any um, free, uh, can we change the time of our passing with different kind of action? Or when is our time to go, doesn't matter what we do, we still go. Or we can affect the moment, can it change? <laughs> we have to sometimes people have some time, no? Yeah. They have give up whatever the reason it may be, accident or health problem or cancer problem, mm, it may be. But when time comes, they have to go. And who gave up their bodies really come, went away from here, they're really so pure. They're, they're not in the frictions, not in this maya, not in this pollution, not in this illusionary things. Be in the world. If you are not attached with these attachments, then you are not in the world. When people are too attached with these um, anything also, good or bad, then the attachment comes. So definitely anyone have to, one day, they have to give this physical existence and be in the big circle, be one with the big circle, no? Mm -hmm. Shalini touches on a good question because I have other people and I must admit sometimes it even happens to me. That's why Baba, I think, called me Doubting Thomas. 
other people tell me about their strong spiritual faith, their strong spiritual path, their journey that makes much progress for them as they sh get rid of attachments, as they learn to be selfless, as they do so, so much seva, and yet they still worry about the fear of death. They're not 1,000% positive of what's going to happen after their last breath. And I know some people receive genuine insights from you. They see your cosmic form. They see unmistakable signs that life goes on. No worry, son. Life goes on. What can you say to the people who have not had those um, reinforcements that life is eternal, who are very good people, very spiritual people, but still have a little fear of death. You have fear, son? You I don't have fear right now, but sometimes in the middle of the night when I'm alone, I think I'm very common, like a lot of people, who before I realize that I need to utter the syllable, ah. <laughs> <laughs> before, I, before I have that moment of realization to utter your name, or Baba's name, or Jesus' name, Fear can creep in, yes. <laughs> fear, fear comes from duality. There is no duality in spiritual world, only oneness, oneness only. There is no second thing in the world. So when you attain the highest peak of truth, you are in the truth, the highest happiness of Ananda, uh, all of these things are just love. These are not um, really, you never remind all these things. So innocently sometimes people are worrying about the fear, exactly there is no death for the Self. It is never going to die. The Self is never going to die. If you people get maturity, spiritual maturity, they enter into the big circle of Supreme Consciousness. If they never get the maturity, they have to back to the world, they have to undergo all these problems, sorrows, happinesses, external forces, jobs, busy life, three jobs, four jobs, and undergoing all these commotions, unrest, happinesses, so many things. Again, in all of this friction, they get maturity, they enter into the big circle, then they experienced boundless ananda, unbelievable ananda. There is no words to explain that. Mind cannot express that. It is experience. You have to experience that. So if I have even a small amount of fear, I still have immaturity. I'm still not mature yet. I promise myself only one question every time I interview you on non-duality. And the question is this. It's the only question I'll ask you. When God creates us in the material world, that is totally duality. Why are we created into duality? It's so hard once we're in it to pull ourselves into non-duality. What's the purpose of our duality? This is the question how it is now you are entering to the university or college <laughs> to study why we have examination. <laughs> why we have examination? If there is no examination, nobody never going to college, even one day also. I see. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to have this challenge, this puzzle. Whatever people wish it happened, uh, they, nobody never think about God. That's a good reason. That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> if everything was perfect now, we would never have to worry or if think about it. If whatever people wish to happen, it is also danger, very danger. <laughs> Some people wish very negative things. Some people wish good things. If you wish good things, it's good. But some people wish very negative things to the society. So if whatever people wish, if it happen, it's really not good. So from what you've been telling us, one of our big jobs is to grow in our spiritual maturity so that we no longer focus on some of these lower questions, these lower fears, yes. and see the oneness yes. of who we really are. Yes. Jody or Shalini, do you have a, a last question here? Yeah. 
So welcome all of you for the Atlanta Thirudram uh, for beautiful universal prayer. Come, if you are a Catholic, come and there do Catholic prayer. For Islam, you have to come do Islam prayer. If you are a Buddhist, come and do Buddhist prayer. If you are a Jorastian, come and do the Jorastian prayer. It is very unique and a universal peace program. Eleven days, beautiful, beautiful, uh, universal peace programs. It doesn't matter what you believe. God is only oneness. There is no duality. So pray for the peace of the uh, entire world. So all the time, don't think about only yourself. You have to sometimes think about others also. Think about the Mother Earth. Think about all the people. So many women suffering in the world like anything. Lot of children suffering so much in the world. I saw so many countries, so many continents, so many places people are suffering without food. A uh, lot of women, children dying with hungry, hunger dying so sad. People have no homes, no medication. Pray for everybody's sake. This is the time. I welcome all of you. I love you like anything. I love you so much, always, from the bottom of my heart, infinite times. And we love you. Jai Kuenamai. Love you, son. Love you, child.